right, guys. So Dragon Ball Super Superhero has officially released in Japan. Um, I did want to make a video just giving my general thoughts about the movie. Um, you know, some of the stuff that happened, some of the new characters, some of the new forms and stuff like that. Um, not really talking about it in context of like the games like Dokkan and stuff like that like I usually do. But actually just sort of um, <clears throat> give my take on a lot of the things that happen in the series, right? Um, I mean, I've done a lot of like Dragon Ball type reviews. I mean, since Super was airing, you know, back in... You know, 2017 and 18, especially during the Tournament of Power era, um, I would really do a lot of these. Now, I, honestly, the first thing I kind of want to start with, I guess, is, like, sort of the the new forms of the characters, right? Because um, I've seen, like, I guess a lot of discussion um, about, in particular, Final Gohan, right? The, the sort of, like, super powerful form um, that Gohan takes at the end of the movie. Um, I don't have an issue with it. Um, I think Gohan, it, it's just supposed to be a callback to Gohan from the Cell Saga, right? But keep in mind that I am, like, the type of fan, like, when I was growing up, right, like, Gohan going Super Saiyan 2 against Cell was, like, the hypest thing in the world. Um, I, I, I love, like, Super Saiyan 3 and Vegito and all these stuff. All the sort of, like, ridiculous transformations to me is very Dragon Ball. That's the reason I have actually always really liked Dragon Ball Super, right? Um, you know, because it's like Trunks just kind of like, I don't know, it just creates like a new Super Saiyan form only for him just sort of out of nowhere. You know, Super Saiyan Rose. It's like every arc of Dragon Ball Super, there's just like tons of new forms, right? Now, the obviously, re like the obvious reason for that is Dragon Ball Super is definitely like, a vehicle for the brand to sell merch. Like, it's it, it's so clear to me, right? That anytime they do, like, new stuff, it's not just like, oh, the characters are stronger. It's like the characters are stronger because they got new forms and stuff like that. I mean, look at just, you know, this movie, right? We have uh, Cell Max, so they kind of, like a, like, a new version of Cell is in there, right? Um, Gohan has a new form. Um, and then Piccolo has two new transformations, two new forms in the movie, right? So it's very clear that, you know, when they're making stuff like this, they're definitely looking at it from an eye of, you know, like, let's sell cards, you know, the Dragon Ball Heroes arcade game in Japan, you know, all the games like Dokkan and Xenoverse and stuff like that, you know, figures, calendars, like, all types of merchandise, like, Dragon Ball Super is always sort of, like, pushing that forward. Um, I do like Final Gohan. Um, I think his hair, maybe it's a bit too long. It, it does, basically, I think Gohan looks great, except for the one shot where Gohan, like, it's a sideways shot. He looks very goofy um, in that one shot, but I would say for the most part, I think that Final Gohan actually, like, is fine. His power is cool. Um, I don't really have an issue with like, sort of, like, the statement that happens where, you know, towards the beginning of the movie, um, Piccolo, you know, sort of chastises Gohan, tells him he needs to train and, you know, stay up with his training, and Gohan says, like, oh, I mean, as long as we've got, you know, Goku and Vegeta around, um, you know, we don't really have, uh, you know, anything to worry about, right? Like, they'll handle the threats, and then at the end of the movie, Gohan does basically tell Piccolo, like, oh, you know, you were right, like, they agree that they're not really sure that even if Goku and Vegeta were there helping them fight Cell Max, they're not even sure if they could have even beaten Cell Max with Goku and Vegeta there. So it's like sort of implied that Gohan is stronger than Goku and Vegeta. Um, now, I don't usually have issues with like this that Dragon Ball Super has done. Um, introducing Beerus and then Super Saiyan God Goku in Battle of Gods, like those two characters, they just... Like, they made them too strong too fast, right? So it just creates, like, these issues where, you know, the tournament of power happens, and Android 17 shows up, and he's just, like, you know, somewhere in the mix of, like, Super Saiyan Blue, and he's able to swap hands with Jiren and stuff like that. He's just kind of, like, on this, like, vague, like, Super Saiyan Blue-esque power tier, right? And it's like, you know, what's the explanation? It's just like, ah, he, you know, fought poachers for years, right? Um, or Gohan, who in Resurrection F was, like, completely worthless as a fighter, right? Like, first form Frieza was too much for him. And then by the turn of power, shows back up. And then Gohan is, again, up there on, like, Super Saiyan Blue levels of power. Um, now, the thing is, is that we're going to get a lot of sort of, like, 
these not great explanations or reasons for these characters to sort of catch up like that, right? I mean, look at the current manga arc where, you know, people are using the dragon to just wish for the new power, which is also here. You know, that's how Piccolo gets his, um, uh, like, ultimate Piccolo potential unlocked form, as well as Orange Piccolo as well. But um, I... The thing is, is that because of the huge, like, gap, like, Goku and God Beerus had, uh, or God Goku and Beerus had in Battle of Gods, it's just created this thing where, like, it's it's just weird for other characters to get to that power. But I do think that the show, the series, is probably better with Gohan, you know, being an actual combatant that could help Goku and Vegeta, right? Or, like, Broly showing up and just being as strong as them and requiring Gogeta to fight, right? Like, I do think those are good things, right? It's not just... Because Dragon Ball GT, I do think one of the, the pitfalls of it is it really very fast. Every character in the Dragon Ball GT is absolutely worthless and can contribute nothing except for Goku. At least in Dragon Ball Super, other characters do get a lot done, which I think is really good. Um, Orange Piccolo and Ultimate Piccolo, um, I think they're cool. I've always been a huge Piccolo fan. I mean, Piccolo was so awesome back in, like you know, the uh, end of Dragon Ball and then the start of Dragon Ball Z. I've always loved Piccolo. So for him to be brought back up like this, I think is really good. Because in a lot of Dragon Ball Super, Piccolo is like beyond fodder. Like, what is the difference between Piccolo and Yamcha in Dragon Ball Super? Like, the difference is that Piccolo is actually there getting his ass beat, whereas Yamcha is not, right? I mean, Piccolo is one of the only, like, major hero characters to die in Dragon Ball Super at all, right? In Resurrection F in the anime where he's killed by Frieza, right? Like, they made a mockery of Piccolo, pretty much. Um, so I do like that the movie kind of, you know, it does use this kind of, like, weirdish way, I guess, of making Piccolo, um, you know, competitive with the other characters by using the dragon, but... This is something we've now seen with, um, you know, Gas and Granola um, in the manga. By the way, I, I did hear that uh, this movie was written before the end of the Moro arc, and then, of course, also before the Granola arc happened. So, um, Toriyama sort of wrote this, you know, with Piccolo wishing uh, for Orange Piccolo and stuff like that from the dragon uh, before, like, you know, Gas and Granola made those wishes, Um in the manga. I do like it, though. I think Orange Piccolo looks pretty cool. Um, I like they returned, you know, him kind of utilizing that giant Namekian transformation to do battles. I think that was pretty cool. Um, then Cell Max, um, like, you know, we there, Cell has been a rumor around this movie for quite a while. What's funny is I remember when Dragon Ball Super Broly um, was actually sort of like a thing. And there were rumors about Gogeta for a long time um, before he was confirmed, right? Um, and, you know, ended up being the same thing with Cell. Now, when we first started getting sort of like leaks of what Cell might look like, it didn't really look too good. Um, or not, I don't want to say that like, we saw shots of him, but like the descriptions of him, it didn't seem like Cell Max was going to be that great. But honestly, like... Seeing him moving around and stuff like that and fighting, I, I don't really... I, I think his design is fine, right? Um, I would say that, you know, it, it certainly would have been better if it, you know, was actually Cell. So that, like, you know, Gohan versus Cell as a rematch was just a little bit more, you know, like, impactful, right? Like, if, if Cell actually remembered Gohan, if Gohan, you know, was, like, fighting this Cell again... But, I mean, that's, you know, obviously not what they were going for. Um, I do like it, though. I don't, I don't really have an issue. I think the way it plays out is fine, too. Right? Finishing off, you know, with Gohan going into his final uh, uh, Gohan form and stuff like that. I I, I do... I, I don't have a problem with Cell Max's sort of, like, role, right? Um, now, the other new characters, I actually really like, um, like, Dr. Hito and then Gamma 1 and 2. I think that they're very engaging, um, Gamma 2 is just so cheer. Like, I, I don't know, like, him and Gamma 1 just talking about, like, being a hero nonstop. Like, I, I actually did really enjoy that, right? Um, and just from what I've seen, it seems like a lot of people did really enjoy, um, Gamma 2 as well. Of course, you know, Gamma 2 towards the end of the movie does, uh, basically die, you know, sacrificing himself, um, to try and beat Cell Max. But I actually really enjoyed the Gamma androids. Um, and Gamma 1 you know, is a character that survives the movie and he's going to go work at Capsule Corp along with Dr. Hito. So it'll be interesting to see how Gamma 1 might play into the future, right? 
Um, another thing I guess I, I, I do want to talk about is this is another... Like, they've been doing this a lot lately in Dragon Ball where they kind of are over-explaining things that I feel like almost don't need explanations, right? So it's like... I think one of the first examples I can come up with this in Dragon Ball Super is uh, Vegito, the Vegito Patara retcon, right? Where you know the the Patara fusion is only permanent if you're gods. You know, I, I thought that was really stupid when that was first in the anime. Um, recently in the manga, there's uh, you know a wish made by Bardock to sort of kind of explain um, how Goku you know kind of survived. I, the the implication, the intention is how Goku survived um, planet Vegeta's explosion, right? But, I mean, it, it kind of covers the entirety of OG Dragon Ball as well. Um, I just feel like a lot of those stuff doesn't need to be explained. Here, the one thing I'm referring to is um, Goten and Trunks. So, there's a point where Piccolo is surprised at the like the, the height difference. Like, Goten and Trunks have sort of grown up quite a bit, right? And Piccolo's surprised at that. Gohan mentions that Saiyans, um, you know, they don't really grow too much, and then they'll have, like, a crazy growth spurt. I guess maybe that's another thing they're trying to do is to, to explain what happened with Goku in original Dragon Ball, where he just, you know, like, between two world tournaments, he has, like, the basically all the growth he has in the series, right? In terms of his height and stuff like that. Um, and I guess they're probably trying to explain why Trunks and Goten were still very tiny during the uh, Universal Survival Saga as well, but... I don't know. I feel like stuff like that, like, they worry too much about explaining these, like, very small details like that, that I just feel like they don't really need to do. It's not the biggest deal, but, I, again, I feel like it's something that doesn't really need to be explained too much. Um, I, I liked Pan in the movie. I thought Pan was was, was fun. Um, I, I like that she has the same voice actor, right? That's good. Um... I would say, for the most part, I actually really enjoyed it. I, like, for a while, right, the, the, I feel like the uh, way that they promoted the movie was probably not the best, but it, it feels much more, I, I guess I would use the word engaging kind of the whole way through. I think one thing, a lot of OG Dragon Ball Z movies would have, like, I think really long dead periods that aren't really that interesting, um, one of the movies I could think of is like the cooler movie is one of the big ones, right? Where there's just a large portion of it that I just find really not that um, interesting. And I feel like this movie didn't really have that, right? Like, cause I think the gammas are sort of very interesting. Maybe for me, I just really enjoy Piccolo on screen. And, you know, Piccolo is essentially the main character. Uh, it feels like the story focuses on Piccolo even more so than Gohan at the, at, you know, if we consider the entire movie. I guess kind of the last thing I could talk about here is Goku and Vegeta's involvement in the movie. Um, I think they did a pretty good job, right, of, like, creating a story that doesn't involve Goku and Vegeta. But they actually had a pretty decent way of getting Goku and Vegeta involved in the movie, right? I think they did a good thing, too, as well, um, with, like, kind of... Having Goku and Vegeta do battle, right, which is very important for the series, you know, for merch sales and stuff like that but because i guess the manga was ongoing at the time they kind of you know did it in such a way where you know it like vegeta not using a certain form or goku not using a certain attack would make a lot of sense right that's why they specifically are fighting without using key blasts or sort of doing anything of that nature right um which i you know i do like that one thing i do feel like didn't need to be in there though is i I don't know. I just feel like it's complete BS. Vegeta kind of doing like making his comments about how the gap in power between him and Goku and Jiren wasn't that great. It was just Jiren's like like focus and meditation and stuff like that. Uh, bruh, Jiren glared away the spirit bomb, man. Like I don't know, Vegeta. <laughs> I, I, Whis comes in and like basically says like, oh yeah, that's exactly what happened. I'm gonna call Cap on that, Weiss, okay? I don't think so. I Jiren was not... 
just having momentary bursts of being stronger because of his supreme focus and meditation, Jiren was dicking on everyone because he was way stronger. I don't want to hear that. That, I, I thought that, that is just an insane statement, I feel like. Like, come on, dude. Jiren was just, like, so far above everybody there, man. Please. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I enjoyed a lot of the new characters. I enjoyed the new forms. I mean, I am essentially a Dragon Ball fanboy for sure, but, you know, a lot of things about Dragon Ball in the past have pissed me off. I remember I hated the Vegito Patar retcon. I thought the final episode of the Trunks arc, like, I, I, like, you guys could go look it up. It's still on the channel. When that episode first aired, I did, like, a huge rant video. I hated I absolutely hated the end of the Trunks arc, right? But Super Hero I did really enjoy. Um, definitely looking forward to see a continuation for the series. Uh, I do enjoy the manga, but obviously the anime, just it just feels so much better. I would love an anime continuation and for it to cover the Moro and Granola arcs and then, you know, continue on beyond everything else. You know, we'll see. Um, if you guys have seen the movie, let me know what you guys think. But I, I really enjoyed it. I, I think this movie ended up being much better than many people were giving it credit for. I mean, the promotion of the movie was certainly very weird, right? Like, they didn't promote it at all, and then all of a sudden they're just showing so much. And it was way different compared to the Broly movie, where, you know, the Broly movie, uh, like, they were just, like, giving us all the craziest stuff right away. They're like, hey, look at Gogeta Blue, look at Full Power Broly. And this movie, you know, we have all these new forms and all these, you know, like, new characters, and a lot of it they're sort of keeping hidden, which I, I do think is very interesting, so... Uh, let me know what you guys think of the film, but I actually really liked it. Um, I I don't know if I want to say I liked it more than the Broly. I think overall the movie probably is like 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 better than the Broly movie. But I mean, to me, I watch Dragon Ball for the raw hands being you know exchanged. That's what I want. Like nothing is topping Gogeta vs Broly. The movie is good, right? Like 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 I, you know Dragon Ball Super like might be better than that, but Nothing in Dragon Ball Super, I feel like, is topping Blue Gogeta dancing on Broly, right? That is just too good. But I like the Cell Max fight. I like all the fights with the Gamma Android, stuff like that. I think it's pretty good. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.